Um, so this is one four, and we're going to start talking angles. Angles are a huge part of geometry, um, so you're going to deal a lot with them. So I first just want to introduce you to what exactly is an angle. Um, an angle is always formed by two rays with the same end point. Okay, two rays with the same end point. Um, so something like this, for instance. If I put a ray here and a ray here, right? So arrow going here, arrow going here, here's my end point. Um, that would be an angle, okay? Um, the rays are always the sides of the angle. So if we talk about the side of an angle, we're talking about these two rays. Um, and then the end point is called the vertex. So this is a side, a side, a vertex. Okay. Um, there is an interior and an exterior for angles. So the interior is what is inside the angle, um, the smaller part of it. The exterior is the bigger part that wraps around. So we don't, we rarely deal with the exterior, but if you were to refer to that whole like outside portion of it, uh, maybe a better way to show you is this, right? All of that is considered the exterior of the angle. Um, I wouldn't even worry about writing it down or labeling it. We really don't touch much on that at all. Um, what we're going to talk more about is how you name angles, how you make an angle, how you draw an angle, how you measure an angle, those types of things. So the first thing I want to do with that, um, well, I'm going to give you a new one because I just scribbled all over this. You're welcome to use that same one if you would like. I just don't want to confuse you with extra pieces and parts and words. So I'm going to draw you a new one here. Sorry, I was in highlighter still. All right, so if I have this angle, I'm gonna put a point A on one of the rays. My vertex is point B, and then I'm gonna put a point C on the other ray. And then I'm just gonna put a number one right on the interior of that angle, okay? Um, when we name an angle, there are several ways to do it. Um, you're going to see all of these ways throughout the class, okay? So make sure you know what all the ways are to name an angle so you don't get thrown off when you see it done one way or the other. Um, the first name I could give this angle is angle one. If there is a number on the interior like that, you may name it with that number, okay? So this is angle one. Um, any guesses what might be another way that I could name this angle? Yeah, Chloe. Angle ABC. What did you say? CBA. Angle CBA. Okay, so you can do angle ABC. You can say angle CBA. There's one more. Yes. Angle B. Okay. So here's the deal. You may name it with just its vertex as long as there's not another angle coming off of it. So if I had something like this, where this was A, B, C, and D, I cannot call any angle right now angle B because there's an angle right here and there's an angle right here and I don't know which one you're referring to if you call it B, okay? Um, so you may name it with just one letter if there's just one angle there. If there's more than one angle, then you have to name it with three letters or if there's a number inside of it. Okay, so ABC or CBA, what do you notice about both of those names? Where is the vertex? In the middle. The vertex has to be in the middle. You can't name it CAB or ACB, okay? The vertex has to be the middle letter. Good on that? Four ways to name it. Okay, um, so here's our first example. Let's say I give you this angle set up. Oops. 
Oh. Sorry. I gotta get used to my ruler again. So three rays, one vertex. We're gonna say this is a one, this is a two, and there's X, Y, Z, and we'll call this W. Okay, I wanna know two other ways that you can name angle one. Okay, so angle one has two other possible names right now. Can you tell me what one of them is? X, W, Y. Um, and you always put the angle symbol in front of it. So angle X, W, Y would be one of the names. What's the other name? You can't call it angle W. Why can't you call it angle W? There's two angles there, right? So we can't call it angle W. We can call it Y, W, X. Okay, questions on that? So just make sure if there's multiple angles there, don't use the one letter. You got to do it the other way. Okay, um, then we are going to classify angles, and this is usually where you guys teach me. That's a G, sorry. Um, I'm going to give you four pictures. You tell me after I draw them all. Don't start shouting things out quite yet. Um, you tell me if you can tell me what type of angle it is. Okay, four types of angles. Can you tell me the name or the classification of that first one? Yeah, Chloe. That's acute. Um, what makes something acute? Less than 90. Okay, so we would say it's between technically 0 and 90. You can't have a negative angle measure. Um, so between 0 and 90, less than 90 degrees would be acute. Okay, um, what's that second one? That's a right angle. And what is a right angle? 90 degrees. And that's, this box here represents 90 degrees. Okay, if you put the box in the corner, 90 degrees. What's the third one? Obtuse. Okay, and that one is going to fall between 90 and 180. Um, notice it's not less than or equal to, it's less than or greater than. Um, that means it doesn't include 90 and it doesn't include 180, okay? Um, and then, does anyone know the name of the last one? It's a straight angle, right. Um, it does make a straight line. It's called a straight angle. And that one is always going to be 180 degrees. Okay. So on this quiz, I'm going to say measure and classify the angle. So you're going to take your protractor and you're going to measure it and then you're going to classify it as one of these four. Okay. Um, so let's do the measuring part. We'll pause this and come. So we are going to talk just like we did yesterday. We were talking about congruent segments. Um, today we're going to be dealing with congruent angles. So I'm going to show you how you mark that, um, what it means, all of that. So basically this is saying if the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B. Um, whenever you see that little M, they're talking the measure. They're talking degrees. So if the, the measure of angle A or the number of degrees of angle A is the same as the number of degrees in angle B, then we can say that angle A is congruent to angle B. Notice we don't put the M there when we're talking congruence, right? We put the M there when we're talking the measure, when they're equal. 
Um, when we're saying they're congruent, you're not going to put the M in front of it. Okay. Um, here's a picture for you. Actually, you know what? I'm going to redo this. Sorry. We're just going to do this angle and this angle for now. Except for those don't look congruent, do they? <laughs> We're going to pretend because my angles are horrible right now. Um, the way you mark congruence is like this. So if this is angle A and this is angle B, we would say angle A is congruent to angle B. So you just put a little arc in the angle. Um, now, if there's multiple angles, like I was about to show you, so say this is my setup and, oops, oops, oops. This is my setup. If these two are congruent, and then the ones next to them are congruent, but they're not all congruent to each other. Just like we did yesterday when we did like double hash marks, now you do double arcs. So it's gonna be two arcs here with two arcs there, and that's how we'll show that they're congruent to each other, okay? The more angles you have that are congruent, the more arcs you add. Questions on that? Okay. Um, so there is a postulate, just like yesterday we did segment addition postulate, there's an angle addition postulate, and it's really the same thing, it's just with an angle instead of with a segment. Let me show you. Um, so let's say I have this picture. If this is A, B, C, and this is O, um, can anyone tell me, based on the segment addition postulate yesterday, what you think the angle addition postulate might say? No one's feeling very confident in that? I'll tell you then. Um, this one says, in this case, the measure of angle AOB, okay, so that's this angle here, right? The measure of angle AOB plus the measure of angle BOC, that would be this angle here, right, um, will equal which angle? AOC. Okay, so that'll equal the whole thing. Put the two parts together, you get the whole, okay? Um, so we're gonna do that with this example and then we are done. All right, so it says this. If the measure of angle RQT is 155, what are The measure of angle RQS and the measure of angle TQS. And let's draw a picture. Um, this is not necessarily drawn to scale. I'll give you a second to get that down. 
then we'll see what we do with it. All right, so angle addition postulate, what's your setup? What are we gonna do with this? Add the two together and set it equal to what? 155. Okay, this is another one of those, don't forget that they gave you pertinent information in the problem itself. Um, so we're gonna say 4x minus 20 plus 3x plus 14 equals 155. And then we'll just simplify from there. So 4x plus 3x, negative 20 plus 14 equals 155. So add the 6, 7x is 161, divide by 7. What is 161 divided by 7? 23. Um, so 23 would be your x value. They asked you to find the measure of RQS and TQS. Um, so that's the two smaller angles. So you're going to substitute the 23. Angle RQS is 4 times 23 minus 20, which is 92 minus 20. So that one is going to be 72 degrees. Okay, and then the measure of angle TQS Again, substituting the 23, so 3 times 23 um, plus 14. So you have 3 times 23, 69 plus 14. Oops. Um, so you get 83 for that one. Oops. Okay, so if you wanted to know the whole angle, um, which they told you at the beginning, but to check that you have the whole angle correct, add those together, you get 155, which is what they gave you up there. So then you know you got it right, okay? Any questions on that? Okay.